Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. This week I thought I would go ahead and show you guys how to do what we call the circular arm joint. And originally I was going to do a demo this week on what we call the reach behind, which is where you want to take a character's arm and you want to um, move it from being in a position in front of the body to being behind the body. Um, and I recorded that video already, but I decided that I needed to go back and show you guys the arm joint first just to make things a little bit simpler. So I'll go ahead and post the reach behind video next week, and this week we'll do the circular arm joint. So if we take a look at the scene file here, the only thing that I've done is I've prepared a little bit of artwork, uh, which is just basically the arm. Um, and so I don't have anything else attached to it. I don't have a hand, I don't have an upper uh, or a sleeve or anything like that. This is just going to be my upper and lower arm. And this should be enough to show the concept of how we can do this arm joint. And so um, all I've done to prepare this artwork is I've got my line art layer and I've drawn my arm in there. And I do have an outline on the arm because this is kind of the worst case scenario um, if you don't have an, ar an outline on your arm, it's much easier to do joints because you don't have to worry about the overlapping um, line art there. Uh, but in this case, let's do it with an outline so we can see why we might run into issues with the arm and the overlapping. So the first thing to do when we want to make our arm is we need to cut it into two separate pieces because we want to animate the lower arm separately from the upper arm. And you always have to remember that when you want to animate something separately with your transform tool, you're going to go ahead and make those on different drawing layers. Um, this is different from if you're using the deform from Harmony. If you're using deform, you can leave everything on one layer. But with um, the sort of traditional techniques, and this is something that you can do in Animate Pro, if you're doing it in Animate, you can't quite get the same level of control that I'm going to show you today. But with Animate Pro, you can do the same thing. So um, let's go ahead first and cut this into two different layers and what I'll do is I'll select my cutter tool which is nested underneath my select tool. And the first trick I want to show you guys is when you're using your cutter tool, if you drag around the outside of the arm but you don't drag across the artwork and you let go, what it's going to do is it's going to do a straight line between those two. Um, so I'll just do that again and I'll do it a little bit better. And you see how you can get really a perfect cut in this um, case just by um, not sort of dragging across the arm work when you do your cut. And then you can do your control X or command X and you can create a new layer and you can do your command V. If you are using the option create drawing from drawing selection make sure that you're in the camera view because this option does not work from the drawing view. You might notice it's ghosted out when you're in the drawing view. And the reason is that um, create drawing from drawing selection is going to create automatically a new layer for you and um, the drawing view only displays one layer at a time so it doesn't know how to do this from the drawing view you do have to do it from the camera. Now that I've got these I'm going to label them just in different ways so that I can see what I'm doing. So I've got lower arm and this one is going to be my upper arm. And now what I want to do is I want to place a circle over that arm joint that I can use to actually bend the elbow around. So I'll just go ahead and select my ellipse tool and if I want to get the line of the ellipse to be the same width as the line that I've already drawn there for the arm, there's an easy way to do this and that's by holding down your O shortcut and then you can just make sure it matches exactly. It seems to match exactly in my case now so I should be good. Uh, but you can always click and drag to adjust that. And then as you're drawing your circle, well first of all make sure that you have the correct color selected. So I'll just hit D for dropper and I'll select the line color there and you want to hold down the shift key while you're making your circle so that you get a perfect circle. It is important to have a perfect circle here. We don't want to have an ellipse. And now I can actually just use my arrow keys to kind of overlap this circle with the artwork that I have already and I want to have it match or line up with the two lines on either side so I can just sort of make that match as, as well as I can there. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect but it's going to be easier for us if it is. So. Now that I've got this circle in here, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I copy the circle that I've created from the upper arm to the lower arm so that I have exactly the same um, circle on both artwork. So I can select that circle and I can do my control C or command C and then I can switch over to my, line, or my lower arm layer and do my control V or command V and then I'll have the same circle in both the lower arm and the upper arm. Now I can return to the upper arm and what I want to do is I want to get rid of this piece of the line um, that is 
um, overlapping where the skin, where the lighter skin tone is there. And if your line art is drawn in, in a good way, then you can just kind of click or drag on that with your cutter tool, and it will remove the um, the circle, that part of the circle. Um, but you might also want to make this a little easier for yourself, and instead of just doing it uh, right away like that, you might want to take your circle or your ellipse, select it, and then convert from pencil to brush. And there is an operation for that in your tool properties of your select tool. Um, or you can get it also through your right-click menu, convert pencil to brush. And once that's been converted to a brush stroke, the cutter tool will work a little bit better with this because it's not going to be limited by that um, sort of outer edge there of the of the circle because you know the circle is defined by a center line or the ellipse is defined by a center line by default and now that I've got that cut out I can go back to my lower arm use my D for dropper switch back to my upper arm and just paint that in so now I've got the completed artwork on my upper arm now on the lower arm there's an additional step that I want to do here and um, and it looks like somehow I ended up deleting my circle from my lower arm so let me just go back a few steps and figure out where I did that I think I may have had uh, both artwork selected when I did my cutter tool but let me just go back to my upper arm and I will select my circle again and I'm gonna copy it into my lower arm layer because I need to have the circle on both now I can go to my upper arm layer make sure that I convert to brush and then I can cut out that line art there with that and I like to just have all the um, I like to have all of the fill inside be one piece, which is why I go back and delete the um, the fill and recolor it in. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Now, when we're going to the lower arm layer, the lower arm layer is the layer that the arm is going to pivot around. So before I go ahead and cut the circle in the same way I did on the upper arm, first I need to define where the pivot is on this drawing. So I can select that circle, and with the circle selected. If I go to my pivot tool, you see how it gives that bounding box with a dot in the center. And I just want to take my pivot tool and I want to put, I'm zooming all the way in, and I want to put the pivot point directly on top of where that center of that circle is. And if I just pop over to my camera view for a second and check out why I did that, if I select my lower arm now and I rotate my lower arm, it's going to rotate perfectly around the circle that I've put in the center. So this is the reason why we want to make sure that we define the pivot point properly there.